Hey TVC kids, so glad to bring you one of my absolute favorite books. I have such happy memories of just reading this to my own kids multiple, multiple, multiple times. Um, they've listened to it literally hundreds of times on the recordings and um, so it's just a story that never ends. Even if you've heard the story or you've seen the movie, listen together with us. I think it's, you're gonna, it's kind of like you hear new things every time and it's the language that's how it's written. C.S. Lewis is such a beautiful writer. So I hope you'll enjoy this and this is gonna be chapter one. All right, of the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. Here we go. Before the chapter even starts, I'm gonna read you the foreword because it's good to know why someone's writing and who they're writing to. This is my dear Lucy, I wrote this story for you but when I began it, I had not realized that girls grow quicker than books. As a result, you are already too old for fairy tales, and by the time it is printed and bound, you'll be older still. But someday, you will be old enough to start reading fairy tales again. Just like me, I love reading fairy tales. You can then take it down from some upper shelf, dust it off, and tell me what you think of it. I shall probably be too deaf to hear and too old to understand a word you say, but I shall still be your affectionate godfather, C.S. Lewis. Pretty cool, huh? C.S. Lewis wrote this for his goddaughter. Just a great story and many more to come. Chapter one, Lucy looks into the wardrobe. Once there were four children whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. This story is about something that happened to them when they were sent away from London during the war because of the air raids. So during the war, the children that lived in London, the families wanted the children to be safe, so they put a lot of them on trains and they sent them out to country houses. And so that's what they were doing. The four of them got to go together, so that was really nice. But they got sent out where the um, air raids were not gonna be happening out in country houses. So it's a little bit different than what might happen with us now, right? But um, I wanted you kind of understand what that was going on there and why their parents weren't with them. They were sent to the house of an old professor who lived in the heart of the country, 10 miles from the nearest railway station and two miles to the nearest post office, so pretty far out there. He had no wife and he lived in a very large house with a, housekeep a housekeeper called Mrs. McCready and three servants. Their names were Ivy, Margaret, and Betty, but they don't come into the story very much. He himself was a very old man with shaggy white hair, which grew almost all over his face as well as his head, and they liked him almost at once. But on the first evening, when he came out to meet them at the front door, he was so odd-looking that Lucy, who was the youngest, was a little afraid of him, and Edmund, who was the next youngest, well, he wanted to laugh and had to keep on pretending he was blowing his nose to hide it. Have you ever done that where you're just laughing so hard, but you know you shouldn't? That was Edmund. <laughs> as soon as they had said good night to the professor and gone upstairs on the first night, the boys came into the girls' room and they talked it all over. Isn't that what you guys do? I know in Isabella and Isaiah, they used to do it when they were little. Guess what? They still do it. They have to go to each other's apartments, but they go and they still hang out together at night and talk. It's a fun thing to do with your brothers and sisters. We've fallen on our feet and no mistake, said Peter. This is going to be perfectly splendid. That old chap will let us do anything we like. I think he's an old dear, said Susan. Oh, come off it, said Edmund, who was trying to pretend not to be tired, which always made him bad tempered. Don't go on talking like that. Like what, said Susan. And anyway, it's time you were in bed. Trying to talk like mother, said Edmund, and you were too young to tell me who are you to tell me to go to bed go to bed yourself hadn't we all better go to bed said lucy there's sure to be a, a row if we're heard talking in here no there won't said peter i tell you this is a sort of house where no one's gonna mind what we do anyway they won't hear us it's about a 10 minute walk from down here to the dining room this was a very big old house and any amount of stairs and passages in between. So can you imagine a big old house with long, long hallways and there's a passage that goes this way and a passage that goes this way and a big staircase. In my mind, this house is amazing. So cool. What's that noise? 
Lucy said suddenly. It was a far larger house than she'd ever been in before, and thought of all those long passageways and rows of doors leading into empty rooms, it was beginning to feel a little creepy. It's only a bird, silly, said Edmund. It's an owl, said Peter. This is going to be a wonderful place for birds. I shall go to bed now. I say, let's go and explore tomorrow. You might find anything in a place like this. Did you see those mountains as we came in? And the woods? There might be eagles. There might be stags. There might be hawks. Badgers, said Lucy. Foxes, said Edmund. Rabbits, said Susan. But when the next morning came, there was a steady rain falling, so thick that when you looked out the window, you could see neither the mountains, nor the woods, nor even the stream in the garden. That was a lot of rain. They were not going outside, were they? All their hopes were dashed. Of course it would be raining, said Edmund. They had just finished their breakfast when the prof with the professor and were upstairs in the room he had set apart for them, a long, low room with two windows looking out on one direction and two on the other. Do stop grumbling, Ed, said Susan. Ten to one it'll clear up in an hour or so, and in the meantime, we're pretty well off. There's a wireless and lots of books. Now, wireless was a little different. That meant a radio. All right, so they could listen to radio shows. These are very different times. <laughs> Not for me, said Peter. I'm going to explore the house. Everyone agreed to this, and that was how the adventures began. Are you ready for the adventures to begin? I am. It was the sort of house that you never seemed to come to the end of, and it was full of unexpected, unexpected places. The first few doors they tried led only into spare rooms, and everyone had expected that. But soon they came to a very long room full of pictures, and they were found a suit of armor. You guys know what a suit of armor is? Like a knight would wear? With a big chest plate and the head it would go down and a little pop open. And after that, the room was hung with green and there was a harp. You guys know what a harp is? Like angels play. Sometimes you'll hear angels playing. So this was a very exciting room. Lots and lots of pictures, a suit of armor, a harp in the corner, and then came three steps down and five steps up, and then a kind of little upstairs hall and a door that led out to a balcony, and then a whole series of rooms that led into each other that were lined with books. Wow, that sounds awesome. Most of them very old books. Some of them bigger than a Bible in church books. Wow. And shortly after that, they looked into a room that was quite empty, except for what? Do you guys know? One big wardrobe. The sort that had the looking glass in the door. To us, that means a mirror in the door. There was nothing else in the room at all, except a dead blue bottle on the windowsill. Nothing there, said Peter. And they all trooped out all except Lucy. She stayed behind because she thought it would be worthwhile trying the door of that wardrobe. What do you think? Even though she felt almost sure it would be locked, to her, to her to surprise, it opened quite easily and two mothballs rolled out. And that's where we're gonna end our story for today. So guys, you know what I think will be fun? I think if you would start your own illustration of this, start by drawing what you think that giant house looked like and the owl that they saw through the window and the stream rolling out there and then draw the stairs and the hallways and then two steps down and three steps up and five steps over in the hallway and then the empty room with one big glorious wardrobe. And tomorrow we're going to see what happens in that wardrobe. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.